and grieve for me shall never die. I know my Redeemer liveth, and the last day shall see him, who I, I shall see for myself and not another. God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried off in the midst of the sea. There is a stream whereof shall make glad the city of God. God is in our midst, and he shall help us in that quite early. Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, but believest thou this. Here ends the reading of the word of God. Yeah. 
alone are God. You are our God. You are our Savior. You are our friend. And you are a very present help in the time of trouble. This indeed is a day that you have made. Your words encourages us to rejoice and be glad in it. I thank you for today. I thank you for your presence that's here. I thank you for what you've done for us, all you've done for us. This morning, Jesus, if there's ever a time we need you, know that we need you now. Yes. yes. And we're thankful to know that we can call on you. Lord, in this time, as we're dealing with this excruciating pain, the hurt, the sure appointment of death, we remember your word said that, yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we'll fear no evil, for you are with us, your rod and your staff, they comfort us. I thank you, Lord, for the Clark family. I thank you that you have been a blessing to them. I thank you that you have given them the blessing of marriage. You've given them the blessing of children. You gave them a happy home. You have been the lifter of their head. And today, I need you to be their heart mender. I need you to cradle them in your arms. I need them to have an undeniable experience of your great love, your true mercies, and your grace that is sufficient. I pray that you will reach down and bind up the hurt. We know that we all have an appointment with death. We also know that you died that we might have life and life more abundantly. Cradle them now, God. And in the days to come, when depression and hurt and confusion might lurk, I send your word that will nullify. I speak against depression. I speak against loneliness. God, I pray they will hear you say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I pray that they will feel your peace. I pray for everyone that you've given such great love that they are here today, standing in mourning and in comfort to them. Heavenly Father, your grace has always been sufficient. Bind them up now, I pray, in your love. As sure as a day like today will be forever edged in their memory, I know, God, that also your love. Let it take root even now. Let your name be glorified in this situation. For you are the God of love. You are the heart mender. You are the healer. And you are the all-sufficient one. Release even more, God, grace. undergird and uphold Jennifer keep her oh God as the apple of your eye and her husband and the children the entire family but most of all we crave your presence here today as we continue to glorify your name because you are God in the name of Jesus I give you thanks Amen, Amen. You may be seated I'm reading from John 14, verse 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare, I would have told you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, ye know, 
and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, you know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here he ended the reading of the scripture. Good morning, everyone. We're we'll reading from First Thessalonians chapter four, verse fourteen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed.
I assure you, my wisdom, we shall not fall asleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, or trial, <coughs> or trumpet, shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptibly, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this thing <laughs> So when this corrupted wish shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be <laughs> then shall be brought to pass the saying that that this is written, that is swallowed up in victory, or that <coughs> Oh, that where is this is that thing? Oh, great, where is that victory? The sting of that is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, we steadfast, unmovable, always abundant in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know, know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yesterday at the wake, I saw some videos of Najee. Bubbly life. Seemed like he was the life of every party he was at. Full of joy. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I am here today. <coughs> my heart is broken, so I can't imagine what my brother Dennis and Jennifer is going through right now. But I'm here just to encourage you to encourage you that God knows all. We don't have the answers, but God has all the answers. And he encourages us you know, in his word that we should mourn with hope, with the hope of seeing Najee again. You know, he won't be like this. So don't think of him laying here. And I'm just going to try to do this song that it may encourage your heart. And for us that are, that are here still, we know that we need the Lord. Because yes. we don't know when, it's our time. Yes. And only what we do for him will last. Yes. So we need the Lord. And I'm just going to try to sing this song. I'm not a singer, but I'll try. <laughs> I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it's getting closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds the call. Cause at the midnight cry. We'll be going on when Jesus steps up. Good morning. I just want to say, on behalf of my friend on the oldest, I'm going to miss him dearly. <coughs> there is not one morning I get up and I don't pray for all three of them. My mom. My stepfather, I have to ask Father God, Father God, cover them every morning. And when I get that news, it was like a shocking. But I know when that day come again, I will see him. He's resting right now. But none of us are nothing. None of us were nothing without God. Yes, yes. <laughs> So I'm just saying to everybody inside here now, you know, let's give your life to God. No one know when that day is coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I know I will see him again. I will see you one day again, my brother. And I love you dearly. And I know that day again, I will see him. Jesus have him. Yes. He's resting. In Jesus' name I pray. Yeah. Amen. Thank 
nothing that I can say that's going to make anything make sense. There's nothing I can say that's going to make take the pain away. Four years after I lost my brother, I'm still dealing with the same thing. There's going to be days when you wake up and you're going to see the stupidest commercial on TV and it's going to make you laugh because you're going to picture him there and doing, making a face at it. There's going to be days when you wake up and it's going to take everything you have to get out of bed. Um, the one thing that I know that got me through everything is it's a song that I um, heard by Hillary Scott. Um, she says it, and I'm so confused. I know her. I know I heard you loud and clear. So I followed through. Somehow I ended up here. I didn't want to think. I may never understand that my broken heart is a part of your plan. When I try to pray, all I've got is these four words: "I will be done." We don't understand why he did what he did. We don't understand if it's maybe Andre was going to face something that he couldn't physically face. So God took it away so he wouldn't have to go through that pain. Took it away maybe to show all of us that we need to be strong. Maybe there's something that's going to happen in the future and we need to know that we have the strength to get through it. Um, he's a bubbly person. I swear if we went from starting in this row and went across every memory that anybody had to say is something about him laughing, dancing, something to make you guys smile. So even though we're here crying, he's up there smiling at us. And he's always going to be a part of you. Always. you, Not physically, but spiritually, he, he's here. Um, and just take that apart. You know, so He's up there in a better place. He's somewhere better than any of us are right now. <coughs> and all we have to do is thank God. Yeah. One day we're going to see him again. Someone said that sleep is a short death and death is a long sleep. Death is a transition to our final, to our destination, which is heaven. So let's rise and sing about when we all get to heaven. When we all get to heaven.
musicians just like Najee was. <clears throat> that young man came into my life when his dad said that uh, uh, he liked to sing. First thing, he's, thing that Najee said when he came is that uh, I sang with my choir back home. And he, he just had a presence about him that it was just the same way. And, and I, it's hard to explain. His way is, 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 is meek but strong. Uh, he just had a way about himself that I loved, and he, he brought something to me. I, I will never, and I, I, see, I see him talking. I, I, I see him uh, just, just uh, being, um, just wanting to, to, to be a part of the group that we were doing. And I just, I just want to say that I, 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 I think his dad and mom for 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 what they did uh, with that young man and, and I, I I told his mom that I, I wouldn't be able to do this because I know I, I I break down and ball like a baby right but this those are just uh, tears of uh, of joy just because he just affected me in a, in a very positive way as a young man uh, a good voice and good family and just had so many things to do. And as one of the other speakers said that, you know, God took him because he said that, uh, you know, your work is done. You know, come home, just, you know, we have something else with that we want you to do. Because he touched us. And so we just have to go on with, with what uh, he's, he has in store. Right? I just wanted to thank him because uh, he really, really changed my life. Um, you know, me and IG. He wasn't as uh, close in high school like that, you know. I just don't know because, uh, you know, my boy Saint over here, you know, this is my boy. Um, we would go out and all of a sudden, G, you know, he'd be by himself and have the whole party uh, go from zero to, you know, 100 in a matter of seconds. And I, I'd be out there by myself too. I don't know if I seen IG, I, I wasn't by myself no more. Uh, he moved down here two years ago. Um, you know, Sam called me. He was like, "Yo, Najee, he moved down here. Oh, I'm looking out for bro. I'm so, got you, man. <laughs> Look out for him, man. Oh, I'm looking out for bro, man. I'm going to hold it down, man. And I just went back and cut. You know, I was." I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really too happy living down here in Atlanta, man. I wasn't, I wasn't enjoying myself like uh, I would be. And, and like, gee, man, you just, boy, you woke me up, woke me up. Woke me up. <clears throat> Tell me what it's like to, um, to have a good time again. I've said, I've said, real and I just want to thank him for taking him out of his father, you know, because I, I, would, I wouldn't be the same. Uh, if I didn't know, bro, uh, I don't know you're up there right now, having too much fun, man. I wish I was with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I appreciate you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm here on behalf of 534 H&M, where he worked. Um, though I only knew Najee for a short period of time, he he changed he he changed a lot about my life and the way that I look at life. When I was having a bad day at work, I come in, Lord knows what he'd be going through, but he was always trying to make sure I was all right and I was okay. And he always thought about everybody else besides himself. And there was never a day, never a day I saw him angry, never a day I saw him spiteful, mad at the world. He always just brought joy. And I want to thank you guys because I know that you guys are proud of the man he is, the man he was, and you should be because he was a beautiful soul. 
and he changed my life and I know he touched everybody's life around him because there's no way that you can have a resonance in a soul like that and not impact somebody's life in a positive way. So I just want you guys to know that I am thankful. I am thankful for the opportunity to have met your son, even though I've only known him for a short period of time. It feels like so much longer. And I just want to thank y'all. My brother, Jennifer, no words, no hugs. And I'm so happy. I have two boys myself. And I asked God for my liberty so I could see grandkids and a big family. And I know what you guys are going through right now. Nobody will have to have to bury their children. I, I don't know. I don't know. I was hoping he was alive. I said to them, is you sure? Sure, sure. Just tell me that he comes home, he's home, that's knock on the door. But I am here, and sometimes when someone dies, and it's only when you don't see them, you realize that they're really gone. And I mourn with you. My brother, I mourn with you, Jennifer, I mourn with your family, my family. I have my family, man. it's not me. It's just two, it's two boys. So I hope they're going through. Rest in peace. And she got to the soup. I miss you. And then when I got the call that Saturday from Emily, and I got a, a text message from Jared as well. I was on my way to work, I was rushing to go to work, and then. I was told to pull over. And the way I got all these messages from Jared and him, I was like, something happened to Najee. And I'm thinking, he's probably just in the hospital or something. And then when they told me that he was gone, it was just like, I couldn't even drive. And then I told myself, it's, it's not real, it's not real. So I drove to work. And when the article came out, I said, I lost it. And it wasn't as bad Saturday as until like everyone else found out. And then I found out Jordan was on his way home that day. And Sunday was Mother's Day. And that was just, Chris matching the pain. And it's, and it's like no mother should go through something like that, period. And that's why I say this with my heads up. If you got someone you love, Tell them that every day. You never know when his day lasts. You just never know. It's just like hours come from not even hearing from him again. Not getting to call three o'clock in the morning telling me how his night was. It's like it hurts me so much. It's like I'm usually the stronger one out of us two. Like when he go out. He don't care what happened, he know that like, he's safe. Like no matter if he's bumping into people, he's like intoxicated, just hitting everyone. He don't care because he know I'm not gonna let nothing happen to him. And it's like, I know right now he wouldn't want me to be weak at this moment, but this won't definitely like a hole in my heart. I never lost someone as close as Najee before in my life. I just want to say, rest up, King. Love you. I just want to say to Jennifer, Barry, Kevin, Jordan, family and friends that are left, nothing in this life can ever prepare us for the death of a loved one. Whether that results from a sudden accident or a sustained illness, it always catches us off guard. That is so deeply personal and so stunningly final. Nothing can emotionally prepare us for its arrival. With every death, there is a loss. And with every loss, there will be grief. <coughs> to you guys, family, friends, loved ones, I ask you to bear in mind that God promises to wipe away every tear from your eyes. 
Know that there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. And I ask you to take comfort in that. It comes from Revelation 21, verse 4. Know that I love you guys, and whatever the need is, I am here. I'm just a phone call away. Dennis, Jennifer, Kevin, Jordan, Monica, Oimani, Sam, Camille, Tracy, and the rest of the families that I met today. The Brown family and our family, we are a close-knit family. There is not much that we don't do together. So although I don't know what it means to lose a child, I feel your pain and I agree with you. So I stand in solidarity with the family this morning and I extend my deepest and humblest condolences to everyone. May Najee's soul rest in peace. Najee is my nephew. Um, I'm not going to refer to him in the past. I'm going to refer to him in the present. Because all that's lying in that box there is a shell. I was awake yesterday and I watched Najee and everything that he was. And I know for a fact that he's not in that box. You know what? Because he was such a great person. I mean, I've heard everyone here just now testify how good my nephew was. And I'm so immensely proud that he touched the lives of so many people. And the reason he's not in that box, because God up in heaven, he looked down and said, you're too good. You're too good, I need you up here. And so he took it. And it broke my heart, many pieces that he took it. <coughs> my sister. There wasn't one thing I could do to take away your pain. Give me your son back. I would do it. But I can't. It takes me out. It keeps me out. I can't do that one thing. I can see out of magic because I live up in London. And I've got to do it that but I didn't see how much of it because it's so far and you got it that I'm here <laughs> talking over a box hi my name is Lola um I didn't know Najee very well I know his parents um I'm the realtor I sold them the home and uh, I don't know if anyone else, but there are times that I wonder, what if they didn't? You know what? I know God is in control. So I don't want to ask anyone else to ask that question. What if they didn't come down here? God is in control. My husband had a chance to know him a little better than I did. Because my husband was doing some tiling at the house on the patio. And there wasn't an evening that no one came home and he didn't talk about this kid. That how he has manners and how he's such a pleasant person. And I know this can be, this must be a very serious loss, you know, because I heard my own husband, the way he talked about the kid. But I just want to remind you, Jens and Dennis, God is in control. And he, he'll take care of you guys, right? Ever since I went home from that, from last week to now, every night I was praying for them, for peace, because that's the only thing we can do right now is to pray for peace for the family, okay? So it just every morning and night, this verse, I just waking up, keep waking up with this verse. And I just looked it up. It says, and Jesus wanted to prepare a place for me. And I was like, for me, what place? And I called my brother in Jamaica and said, I don't know, but I keep getting this. Jesus wanted to prepare a place for you. He said, but Jesus wanted to prepare a place for you. Why are you worrying? I said, yeah, you're right. I, I don't have to worry. But as I sat there and I listened to everyone, I said, this word, this wasn't for me. You know, as I was touching myself one morning, I said, no, get away, death, get away from me, right? I just realized that it's not for me, it's for Jennifer and her family, right? And I just saw that it came from John 14, verse 3. 
And it goes like, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And as I stand here, I can tell you, I have a child too, and I can tell you that God is preparing a place for your son. He's preparing a place for all of us. And all of us has a destiny, but it's only a matter of time. And we will see each other one day, only if we live by his word. Amen. I work with them. He never, never show anyone about this. And that's the same way Naja is. Dennis is like my brother. I come all the way from Jersey now. I drive how many hours just to come here to support him. And I could not come here and didn't say anything. God bless you, brother and sister. And um, just believe that one day we will see him again. Just be believe in God. And he will take care of you guys. I just want to read something. Someone read it already. It's a couple of verse. First this alone. Um four. Verse thirteen. But I would not have you be to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he sorrow not even as other fish have hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also wish also with sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Thanks be to God. Amen. So Amen. let these words comfort you, Dennis and Jennifer, Kevin and Jordan and all the family and friends that are here. That you will see <coughs> magic. God bless you all. Thank you. He made an impact in my life. <laughs> On my friend's life. Emily, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Me, Emily, Tasha, we used to work at National together. We spent <laughs> time on breaks together, time outside of work together. We used to go eat, we used to go have fun. <laughs> and when I got the call, I got the call, I was at the Renaissance Fair. <laughs> then I just hear Emily calling me, she's like, he's gone, he's gone. I'm like, who's gone? And she tells me, Najee's dead, Najee's dead. I was like, <laughs> I didn't want to believe it. I was like, no. <laughs> It's just a sick joke, right? <laughs> and then I saw all the articles. <laughs> if I could turn back the hands of time, I could, but I know I can't, so I won't stay stuck on these feelings. I will get over this. <laughs> And I will look at you in such a positive way. Because I know you did for everything else. You lived your life to the fullest, and that's what I intend to do. I know you wouldn't want me stuck in this sad position. So I'm going to be happy. I'm going to look at everything so positive. And I want to thank you. Thank you for being there when I couldn't be. Thank you for everything. Najee, life touched so many. I want to tell you a shocking reality though. You look at from the day he was born to the day he died, Najee lived only 295 months. 
if all of us in this room were to live to be a hundred years old, that would only be 1,200 months. That's a short time. Do me a favor, turn to someone next to you, tell them you love them, and give them a hug. Oh, oh, oh. 
short snaps of Najee's life. Najee Ryan Clark was born in Kingston, Jamaica on October 12, 1994. Najee was 24 years old and he is son to Dennis and Jennifer Clark. From birth, Najee was always smiling. One song he loved to sing every morning was, I Believe I Can Fly. Najee first attended the Mona Prep School in Jamaica. He then migrated to the United States. After he moved, he attended Ludston Hughes Elementary School and Cecile Hill Tyson Community School of Performing Fine Arts, where he started to pursue music. Najee was raised in a Christian home. He attended First Fellowship Church in East Orange, New Jersey, and got baptized at Calvary Tabernacle in Hampstead, New York. He eventually became a drummer for his church. He touched so many hearts and souls of people within the church with his music and his charisma. Now, Jay was such a brilliant and outstanding student that at age 16, he advanced in his academic and was scheduled to graduate at such an early age. But as a mom, Jennifer thought he was too young for college. In order to have him at his pre-level, both Dennis and Jennifer had to write a letter to the Board of Education explaining that he was too young to enter college, so he stayed another year in high school. After he graduated high school at age 17, he started to pursue a degree in auto engineering at Essence County College, furthering his interest in music. He also worked part-time at the Ambulatory Care Center as a scanning associate. Not long after, Najee started working at St. Barnabas Medical Center as a dietary assistant. He, he was loved by his colleagues and the patient that he attended to. With his smile and soft-spoken voice, he touched many hearts. Najee's first car was given to him by his father, which he had previously owned. Najee fixed up that car, painted it all black, tinted the windows, and made it into his very own sports car. He fell in love with the car so much that he was always willing to give a ride. One thing for sure, you never hear Najee say, don't mess up my car. In 2017, the Clark family relocated to Georgia, where it took Najee a little while for him to adjust because he missed all his friends back home in New Jersey but he made the best out of any situation and was the life of any party he went to. He always made friends wherever he went, bringing positive energy to everyone around him. He loved going out and dancing with his friends who was always loved his uplifting and joyful spirit. At the end of the day, he was someone you can count on and was willing to be there for his friends. His relative and friends can all testify to what a loving, helpful, positive, and welcome in person he was. Everyone who had the opportunity to interact with him tremendously enjoyed his physical presence. Najee was an angel from above. His purpose here on earth was fulfilled. God gave him to us, and we can thank God for every moment of the 24 years we spent with him. Najee, just want to say we will love you, love you dearly. In our hearts, you will always be. Your love, your voice, and your smile are forever imprinted in our minds. You are so loved, and you are so missed. All right, Pete, my cousin. Uh, good morning. Um, if you don't know already, uh, my name is Jordan. I was the brother of Najee Clark. There is so much I can say about my brother's joyful, positive energy, creating good vibes for everybody. Uh, when I got the call on May 11th, I was getting ready to go to Baltimore with my roommate EJ to spend Mother's Day with his mom since I was not able to fly down to Georgia yet. I had a scheduled flight for Tuesday. And I go down and this guy is telling me, oh, um, pack your things, you have to get a flight to Georgia, something has happened to your brother. And I'm just thinking, it was a minor car accident. Maybe he's just in the hospital, everything's going to be okay. But I don't know why that entire day, just when I woke up from the jump, I was just not feeling good. I just had a bad feeling. And I just knew, calling my parents, calling the enemy, no one was telling me answers, and I was aware something was wrong. When I got to the airport, and I just turned around, I saw my parents and Emily coming towards me. And it happened. I know right now, Najee, 
but not once else see us being down so much. She was such a positive person, so much energy, always smiling, always saying "Wagwan" everywhere he goes. I that shit, I win for you. I'm fresh. He always knew how to, even at home when we have the minor minor problems, he always knew how to make a positive situation out of everything. At the end of the day, he always knew how to make me and my parents smile. And I know that's what I'm gonna continue to do for him because I know he didn't tell me a lot, but he told so many people how he was so proud of me. Going to college, being able to go to college, pursue a degree in something I love, and knowing that I, be, I should become, um, try to make him become successful. He was just always try to call me, talk to me from time to time. We were not always close at first, but then as we got older, we were just starting to get close, especially down here in Atlanta. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I know now, as we all mourn here today, I know when we walk out of here, he would want us to be happy. He would want us to go on, live our lives, just spread the positive energy that I know he's not being able to spread today. And as you, I know as you watch over me now, I will continue to make you proud. I will continue to fight. I will continue to love mom and dad, be there for them every step of the way. I know that God is with you. I know that God is with us and watching over us. I just love you. And I wish I got to saw your face one more time. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to read the acknowledgments. On behalf of the Clarks family, we would like to express our profound appreciation to Bishop Barrington Goldston and Elder Robert Stewart, and to everyone else who expressed kindness and sympathy during our time of bereavement. Your prayers, calls, cards, flowers, contribution, kind thoughts and deeds have helped us sustain in this very difficult time. May God continue to bless each and every one of you. May he grant you peace and keep you in his care. There will be a repast after, afterwards. Please check your programs and everyone is welcome. Thank you everyone for coming and enjoy the rest of the program. Mijay, I'm learning how to live in a new way. Since that day, you were taken away. The J, I'm learning how to live with the things left unsaid, knowing I got to say them with every tear that I shed. The J, my son, I'm learning how to live by embracing the pain, knowing that you live on through the memories that remain. The J, my son, I'm learning how to live knowing that I will never again see your face, but I have the peace knowing you're in a better place. Vijay, my son, Vijay, my son, Vijay, my child. I'm learning how to live. Knowing you're in God's care, it gives me the strength to move on and makes the pain much easier to bear. But Jay, my son, I love you. But Jay, my son, I always love you.
sometimes a lot to say. And um, in situations like these, it's very hard to say anything. Dan is ready for um, life of men versus the family members to his brother. This is not anything anyone would expect. And this is not easy for anyone to handle. What I can say to you is that I do know God is able Amen. to undergird you and to support you and to carry you day by day hour by hour and um, don't let anybody tell you that you'll ever get over this you'll not get over this but you'll get through it moment by moment yes. so before I say anything else I want to encourage you to take it moment by moment day by day, and he will help you. Would you mind standing with me, please? Let me read two verses from the word of the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter four. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen, they are eternal. Father, we bless you. We're grateful for your call and for your anointing, but once again we seek your glory to rest upon us and upon this people. Stand in our stead. Speak through us a word that will lift the spirits and take this family in this household of friends through the next hour and by faith through the days to come. Let your will be done, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The cards are not strangers to us. We have worshipped together in New York several times. And um, it's just painful to to live this moment. I thought about what I would speak on and doing this for several years, you do develop a repertoire of messages when it comes to funerals and different events. And I chose to speak on one of my familiar topics when it comes to occasions like this because I wanted to express to the family and to say to you these words of the Apostle Paul have come to mean so much to me and they've taken me through situations 
to numerous dimensions. And I'm trusting God to help you today as well. Paul had many situations in his life that he could complain about. <coughs> Rejection, betrayal, feeling forsaken by God. And he summed up his life situations and said, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He pulled his situation and he said they were tools in the hand of God that crushed the outward man. But God, while crushing the outward man, was renewing the inner man try to tell us that what happens to us on the outside that looks negative works something positive on the inside so he says we we should have or we could have two perspectives when it comes to the situation we deal with we could look at life from the temporal perspective, the outward perspective, or we could look at life from the eternal perspective. We could look at life the way man sees it, or we could look at life the way God sees it. And he's suggesting that if we only look at what happens to us from the temporal, the visible perspective, we will become very discouraged. We will feel like God has forsaken us, that God is not with us. But if we look at things from the eternal perspective, we will be encouraged and be renewed. So he said, let me give you an eternal perspective of whatever happens to you in life. So that you don't feel forsaken, you don't feel rejected, you don't feel God forsaken, but you can be renewed and find the strength not to run year after year, but Paul said day by day. And he lists three things in the text that I want to lift for your consideration. Number one, he said our oh, light affliction. He looked at <coughs> his afflictions and he concluded that they are light. Not from the temporal or the outward perspective, but from the eternal perspective, from God's perspective, whatever God sends our way to afflict us, Paul says we need to view it <coughs> as light. He's trying to tell us that we're able to bear it. Yes, yes. We're able to carry it. Yes. We're able to get through it. Because the God that we serve He's never going to give us more than we're able to bear. But he will, whatever temptation, make a way of escape that we might be able to bear it. Jennifer, Dennis, so what does that mean? This, this heavy stuff that God laid on you, in God's view, he knew you had, you had the muscles and the strength to handle this. He knew that he, the enemy would not crush you under the weight of this loss. But somehow you'll find the strength yes. to lift this thing up Amen. and lift your voice up and lift your hands up and still give God praise. Yeah. He knew you'd be able to say like Job, though he slay me, yes. yet will I trust him. Amen. I believe God knew your capacity. In fact, he knows more about your capacity than you knew about yourself. Yes. And day by day you're going to discover my God has been with me. He has been my strength. And if it had not been for the Lord who is on my side, where would I be? I suggest to you that there will be other family members, other families that if they went through this, they wouldn't be able to go do what you're doing right now. But thank God the Lord never gave you more than you can bear. I think that's a good place to give God praise. Paul had a situation 
And the Bible said he prayed three times, asking God to take that thorn out of his flesh. And the Bible says, the Lord says, Paul, I'm not taking it from you, but I give you my grace. My grace will be sufficient. Can I say that the Lord has placed his thorn in your flesh, but he's also giving you grace that is sufficient. And the grace of God will take you through this. This, from God's perspective, is light. Yes. And God's going to help you to handle this. Yes. To the audience, whatever you're going through in life, whatever you have to face in life, walk away from this service knowing that the eternal God, who is in charge, the suffering God who watches over you, will never let anything come in your life that you can't handle. Tell your neighbor, you can handle it. Yes. Cry, but you can handle it. Yes. Sigh, but you can handle it. Yes. Wonder why, but you can handle it. Your afflictions are light. The second thing that Paul says to us, that our afflictions are light, and he says, but they are for a moment. This, this incident happened a number of days ago. And the pain has been every day and will be even hereafter. But from God's perspective, this is for a moment. Yes. This is not going to last forever. This too shall pass. And so if we take an eternal view, we understand that God gives us three score years and ten. And, and if we're real strong, eighty is guaranteed. And so if we look at life and, and, and what we're going through and we're suffering for those 80 years, it looks like a long time span. But he's saying, don't look at it from the time span that you live on the earth realm. Look at it in, in terms of eternity. What we're going through now, when you put it in the time span of eternity, it's a moment. It's a short time. This period of pain when compared to the glory of eternity, is a moment. This period of weeping, when you compare it to the eternity of blessings, is a moment. Yes. So we've got to take our eyes off what we're going through now and start looking ahead in eternity where we should live with him forever. When we reign with him forever and have joy and peace forever. Yes. There will be no weeping on the other side. Yes. There will be no dying on the other side. There will be no mourning on the other side. There will be no, no coffins on the other side. We will not need an undertaker on the other side. Our life is not just what we live here, but our life is, must be measured in space of eternity. In God's eyes, this is for a moment. It's not going to be forever. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I wish I had a Sunday morning crowd that could give God praise. Weeping may enjoy for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your morning is coming. Your morning is coming. This is your night season when you will weep. But God says your joy is coming because the day is going to break. I'm looking for the, the God I serve, the God we serve to return and break the night and make day and when day comes, it will be joy. You'll never know what joy really is like until you go through season of mourning. And as we do life together, all of us, we're beginning to appreciate the sad days because it makes the good days even more precious. Somebody said, Amen. Spend time with your families. Yes. Can I suggest that you start to discount <laughs> the faults? Right. Stop being picky. Yes. Yes. Stop pointing out yes. the things you don't like yes. and start focusing on the things that you do like. Yes. Because this time span is short. Yes. Yes. And we need each other. Yes. We need each other. Our afflictions, number one, they are light. Whatever God sends to you, you can bear. Number two, they don't last forever. 
they are but for a moment. And the third thing that Paul says, which I want you to look at very carefully, he says, they are working for us. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 They are working for us. Yes. They are light. We can bear it. Mm -hmm. Number two, they are for a moment. They don't last forever. And number three, they are working for us. Yeah. I don't know and I can't explain to you how God is going to take the situation and work this for your good. But I do know this is going to work for your good. Yes. Because the Bible tells us yes. all things, all things work. work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Will you say with me all things, all things work together for good. Work say if I can believe it, all things, all things work together work for good. good. Note Paul did not say all things are good. This is not good. But all things work. God can take this and work this for your good. And you need to hold on to that. I'm going to see good out of this. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. This is not the end. And don't conclude this to be the end until you see the goodness of God in the land of the living. It's going to work for your good. So let, your, let, let the enemy do what he wants to do. God says you can bear this. God won't let it last forever. And God is going to work this for your good. Good is going to come out of this. I don't need to be a prophet to say it. I just need to be a believer in the word. The word said it's going to work for me. So with that understanding, I want to encourage you. You're going to get through this. You're going to handle this. You're going to have the grace you need to bear up under this load. And it's not going to be forever. Because there is an eternity when this will be over. But while you're on the earth realm, God is going to make sure that this works for you. Yes. Trust them. Yes. It's going to work for you. Yes. Squeeze the neighbor's hand and tell the neighbor, you can handle whatever comes your way. Yes. Let them talk about you. You can hold your mouth. Let them lie on you. You can go through this. Let them take your stuff for clothes on the house. You can hand, let them lay you off. You can handle whatever comes. You don't have to curse and swear and fight. You can get through this. You can handle it. And it will not last forever. And it's going to work for your good. And Dennis, it's going to work for your good. Jennifer, it's going to work for your good. Jordan, it's going to work for your good. God is going to do it. Let's pray. I speak your peace over their lives. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep their hearts and their minds stay on you. You promise that you will keep us in perfect peace. I speak that peace over them. You promise that you will comfort those that mourn. Comfort them. Carry them. Bear them up. Let your grace sustain them. In the name of Jesus. Keep the negativity away from them. When they have questions, if you don't answer it, let them feel your presence so they can trust you. Lord, as we prepare to leave, make the journey for AJ's final resting place. Send your angels ahead. Go before them and support them in that 
final moment. We will lay him in hope that we will see him again. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. So we know we will see him again. Except the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But you said if it dies, it will bring forth. We thank you, dear God, that the qualities, the values that he lived his life by, though his body is being planted in the ground, those values are multiplying. Thank you for those that shared their hearts and ex expressions with us to make us aware that he's still alive in their memories. I pray you multiply that. Send Joel over to the house. And where his presence won't be, let your peace be. Take the doubts out of their hearts and let them know that you're in charge. And we submit to your sovereignty. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Let's repeat the Lord's prayer together while you remain seated. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom. I will not turn yet over to the funeral directors without saying to everyone that's here. Life is only worth while living when live for God. It's appointed unto men once to die and after death the judgment. Let's all make our calling an election sure. Put Christ in your life. Yes. Keep him first place in your life. Yes. Yes. It's only a life that's lived for Christ is worth living. Amen. Amen. He loves you more than you even love yourself. Yes. And we need to lean on that love. Yes. Our prayer for you, for all of us, is that we live for him until he calls us home. God bless you.
Bears, if you will, go from behind the minister for me, please. Father, along we let me sing it. No the shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he had set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will deliver him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe the tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know. I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands 
With Jesus I can take it. With Him I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in Your hands. Job says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and then He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy my body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself and not another. And my eyes shall behold Him, though my reign be consumed within me. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Blessed are the dead that die in Christ, for they rest from their labor and their works do follow them. For as much and please Almighty God, in his wise providence to take over this world the soul of our deceased son brother friend we now commit his body back to the ground ash to ash and dust to dust and we're looking for the glorious resurrection and the appearance of the lord and savior jesus christ that who's coming he shall judge both the dead and the we brought nothing to this world, and it is certain we shall take nothing out. The Lord giveth, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we do the 23rd Psalm together? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In closing, we remind Jennifer and Dennis that God never sends you more than you can do. And you will, with every temptation, make a perfect escape. And while this is difficult, remind you again, it's light. It's not going to last forever. God and His wise wisdom, providence, and strength is for us. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We honor you and exalt you. In you we live. In you we move. And in you we have our being. We are complete only in you. We ask now as we lay this remains back to the ground that you will walk from this place with his parents, with his siblings, with his friends, and God that his memory and his legacy was involved. We leave him, God, but we take you with us. We carry him through this moment, the days to come, and the months to come. We bless you. And from the heart we say, though you slay us, we will continue to trust you. We will trust in the Lord and not be afraid. For you, O Lord Jehovah, is our strength and our song, and you have become our salvation. With joy now, God, draw from the reward of salvation and let this family and this group of people find in you the strength they need for this hour and this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 By and by, when the Lord, when all the saints of God are gathered home, we will tell the story how we overcome oh we will understand it better by and by i'm seeing by and by when the morning comes when all the saints of god are gathered home we will tell the story how we overcome we will understand
and the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in.
thing I heard is a little boy, a little preacher said, he said, little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. Much prayer, much power. In order to deal with this, we need much power. So therefore, we need to pray often that God will give us strength. The Bible declares that the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you don't mind, let's grab hands together and let's pray. Let us pray. Father, we come now. At the close of this watch, we give back to you what you have given to us. Father, you experienced this in your own, your own son's life when he was on the cross and he said, Father, into thine hands. I commend my spirit to you. Therefore, Father, the assignment that Brother Nigel had is complete now. So we can say as Jesus said, it is finished on this side. But we don't say goodbye. We said, Nigel, we'll see you in that great getting up morning. For we know that the word declares to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Father, we believe that he was saved and filled with your precious Holy Spirit. So therefore, we look to hear your call, his final resting place, but his memories will walk with us throughout our spirits. Father, strengthen this, these parents, these siblings, his extended family, these friends. As we prepare to leave, we say, now the grace of God and the sweet communion yes, yes. of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide. Yes. Now, henceforth and forevermore, Holy Spirit, we ask that you cover this family like only you can. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the saints of God, the creed and declared with one accord and said, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Amen. 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 God bless you, keep you, is our prayer. You may be dismissed at this time. So nice. <laughs> what are you doing in a mess in the house? <laughs> this is me and our car. Oh. oh my god. Family forever. Forever. This is so <laughs> Poor